blur the penis graffiti on the side. Right, Matt, let's talk shop. What was the biggest problem that the Basingstoke Canal encountered? Uh, Basingstoke's a shit hole. It's a real place. So we've, we are literally... <laughs> ah, Rebecca's found a problem. I mean, it's a fun... I think she's found a bridge. It's a fun problem. I mean, you call that a problem, I call that a solution to getting over the water. All right. Almost lost Paul in the hole. Yours, us. He's found something really quite exciting. I've found something really quite exciting. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Um, you join me today, Paul and Rebecca, and our resident canal expert, Matt, on the last five miles of the Basingstoke Canal. Now, for the eagle-eyed viewer, you'll know we've been here before, but we missed a small chunk of it, about a mile of it. Now, the reason we missed it is because, well, we thought there was nothing here, but it turns out that's not the case. So you join the canal trio on the extreme west end of the Basingstoke Canal. Now, everything to the east of Greywell Tunnel is actually still navigable. West of the tunnel, however, you find this, the last five mile stretch and the abandoned part of the Basingstoke Canal. In particular, just that way there, about half a mile or so, is the old wharf, which now lies under Festival Place, the shopping centre. And we're gonna take a walk around this stretch because Matt assures us he's found something really quite exciting. I've found something really quite exciting. So technically this is the westernmost part of the Basingstoke Canal that you can, you can actually see and walk on uh, despite the fact it's abandoned. Everything else to the west here is the urban part uh, which is now you know, overtaken by uh, East Rock Park, the road and of course the shopping centre. We're just walking around the curve and I think we're coming up to a bit of an embankment. So before we get to Matt's exciting thing, we've also identified a couple of other features which may or may not still be in existence, one of which is a culvert. So I think if we go through that hedge just there, we might find it. So before we get to Matt's exciting thing, I was really keen to try and trace any of the remains of this curved section of the canal shown on the side-by-side -side maps here from the National Library of Scotland. The bottom corner here on the modern view has quite a striking tree line to it. Right, this whole area has been a red herring. We think there's so much infill from the road uh, adjacent to us, the A339. Uh, the very lateral road this time of day and we think the whole of this area is complete red herring. We came up what we thought was the embankment but we've re relocated ourselves and we don't think so. Our fears were confirmed when we realised that we could flip to the LIDAR on the National Library of Scotland map site. The entire corner here has been filled in and over, likely with spoil from the recent road. Over there is where we're going to head. We go down to the level of the canal and the LIDAR shows that we can see that. And then we're going to head round to, uh, what do we keep calling it? Matt's exciting. exciting thing. Matt's exciting thing, right? And that is literally sort of, I don't know, what, 400 metres that way. Well, I was just thinking it needs a little bit, little bit of a jingle. We need a jingle, right. If we have a jingle for Matt's exciting thing. Someone make jingles? Matt's exciting thing. Yeah, it's no, no, I'm on my own. Okay, right, that way. <laughs> so we're thinking where Matt has stood people. That's Matt, obviously. That's Rebecca, that's Matt. Matt, that's Rebecca. That's a tree. We're thinking that that there is the alignment of the canal. Don't remember many abandoned canals that we've walked along in all of our time would have been so difficult to trace. We've just spent the last 10 minutes thinking we were on a certain level, but we weren't. Matt's now stood on the southern side of this section of the canal for definite. I don't think that was a towpath. I think the towpath was that side, but again, there's no sign of it. You've got the, a slight dip here, but all of this was just infilled and obliterated. Um, so we're gonna carry on heading that way, I think, if we can get through those stinging hills. So, so Matt, what is the biggest problem, what was the biggest problem that the Basingstoke Canal had? Water. It, water. Lack of right. water. 
So how, that leads us to what you have recently found, um, which may or may not relate to the canal. Under promise and over deliver. Well, yeah, who knows? Ah, Rebecca's found a problem. I mean, it's a fun- I think she's found a bridge. It's a fun problem. I mean, you call that a problem, I call that a solution to getting over the water. All right. G. <laughs> right, Matt, we're at ground zero. Yeah. Ground zero. Ground zero. Just through there is Matt something exciting. Like my thing. super secret super yeah. thing. Yeah. So what we're we looking at? What, what have we found? We've found a pumping engine. Pumping engine. Right. Pumping engine. So we don't know what this is for. We assume it should have something to do with the canal. The fact it was low on water or short on water all the time. Absolutely. There's potentially that this pumping engine was used maybe to take some of the water out of all the, 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 the rivers and the springs here up into the canal. Because there is a lot of water right underneath us now actually, isn't there? Yeah. So, come on, where are we going? Let's do We're this. going that way. All right. Yonder. Yonder. So Matt's told us to go through this hedge here, um, down this little pathway. Um, I mean, we're really off the beaten track here. I say off the beaten track, I mean in the hedge. Oh, wow. And there is, in front of us, an old building. Right, so this is it, Matt. Now, this appears on nearly all of the old side-by-side -side maps. Yep, certainly the 25-inch. Yep, so we're talking 1880s at least. Ish, yeah. But it does look, the brick looks in good condition. Pretty good condition. Yeah. So whether it's been re, re bricked and repurposed at some point perhaps, but pumping engine, that says to me, it moves water from a different level. So let's have a look inside, shall we? Right, just trying to give this some context in terms of what we're looking at. So this side is the west side and the water goes in about two feet below my feet there. About two feet below my, my actual feet there. So. so this side on the other end, the water comes out probably four feet below. So from that side to that side, there's a difference of about two feet. So all credit to Matt, look at the size of this old wheel. So firstly, I should say I am definitely no expert on water wheels and their uses, so let's try and unpick this with some logic. Secondly, the wheel, aside from all the mineral deposit, looks relatively flat, so that doesn't really give us much to go on. Now, at the far side though, we do have a handful of large cog workings. Can you see them all there in the distance? Now, as this is referred to as a pumping house or pumping engine, could they have been attached to a beam engine or a steam engine of some kind to make the water move, to move the wheel and then move the water? If not, then it's the other way around and the water moved the cogs to power something else, a multitude of possibilities that were not water and therefore not canal. Hmm. So inside doesn't really help us. Let's go and have a look either side and see if we can gain any more info. There's a wooden <coughs> sluice gate. Now the sluice gate's got its own gearing on it. So obviously there was a handle maybe or something to move the sluice gate up and down. So they did control the water going in here at this point of entry by this sluice gate just here. Um, you can also see the wheel behind it, which has got cast iron, um, bucket so the wheel would have turned uh, clockwise as we look at it from that way the wheel would turn clockwise around like that and you can see the gearing attached to it so it did something use the gearing the other side in what is now an old shed to make I don't know turn something else that's where we're lost that's where we need a bit more help from you guys to let us know what this was So the water went in at that end and left at the other. So we assume the wheel was powering something, not something moving water via the wheel, and therefore not canal related. So let's have a quick look at the other end and the tunnel to the east, roughly where the water left the house. So for context, 
The pumping house is 30 yards that way. From the pumping house, as you saw on the shot, it goes left underneath this tunnel. So why have a tunnel here? It's quite a well-engineered tunnel. But again, it doesn't look 1794. So to the scout under. It's curved as well, actually curved. That's beautiful. Right, so we just climbed out from underneath there where the tunnel is, and we've just been chatting about what this could have been for, what the pumping engine was for. And we are left with a big sort of headache in terms of, we haven't got a clue, basically, have we? We're, we're thinking that it didn't lift or raise the water, or if at all it lowered the water by about two feet, but that was to just drive the wheel. The wheel turns clockwise. Matt, you saw the gearing. A couple of uh, gear wheels in there, weren't yeah. so they? Yeah, so it was used to turn another something, something. else. Um, but the mills are up there. The mills for this part of the area are another 100 yards that way. And why have a tunnel there as well? Curved tunnel. So I think we're gonna have to put this down to a mystery. There's a lot more questions, and if we have more time, um, it's half past seven. We need to get back to the cars because they're going to lock, lock that in. car park. Yeah. So we better do that. So we're going to sign off for the minute. Thanks to Matt for showing us this wonderful little relic hidden away just to the uh, east of Basingstoke. Uh, but for Rebecca and Matt and I, we'll see you next time. Mystery number two of the day, Rebecca. What happens in the car park between like the, the 1st of April and the 19th of April?